And we are live. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Bigfoot Odyssey. This is our late show format. We're doing it a little bit early because I'm at work uh, doing an 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. shift. So I didn't want to miss the show. Uh, Brad did a fantastic job last week. So uh, we're here. You know, I had uh, talked about uh, people coming on that you don't have to show your face. You don't have to say your name. You know, we understand that there are just this subject is just not accepted uh, by, by some people. You know, it can affect your job and affect your, your family life, you know, coming forward. So uh, got contacted by a few people. Paul is here with us uh, and certainly appreciate him uh, coming forward and going to tell us what's going on around there. But before we do that, before we get started, remind everyone, please keep it clean for us in the chat. We do certainly appreciate that. And uh, check out links in the description for My Patriot Supply. You can get your your emergency food supply from My Patriot Supply. If you use our emergency, not emergency, our uh, web, special website, preparewithbigfoot.com, and you can get deals for one, two, three, and four week food supplies last up to twenty five years. And uh, all right, so with me as always, he's a uh, Phil producer for the Travel Show. He is my trusty sidekick, Brad Hatcher. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, Kerry. I'm I'm so glad that you're here tonight. I, I missed you last week. Yeah, man, it's work. It's uh, I was doing 15 hour days last time, so at least it's only 12 hour days this time. So, well, I'm, <clears> I'm, I'm glad day. you're uh, glad you, we were able to do this tonight. Yeah, I'm up all night, and every time I, I ask somebody to call me, nobody ever does. So, I uh, <clears throat> all you guys over there in in uh, in Europe and Australia that are in the middle of the day i'm up in the middle of the night so call me you can call me on messenger we'll talk i've got i'm just sitting here and watch wells that's all i do so uh well our guest um coming to us from the midwest uh paul you've had quite a few experiences i know you and i have talked about uh talked about this on the phone and keeping your your identity um on the DL, we understood that perfectly. We respect that, and really appreciate you coming forward to tell this <clears throat> what's going on with you. Um, so, why don't you just kind of maybe where were you and believe whether you believe these creatures existed or not before you became aware? Uh, I thought it was a I thought it was a joke. You know, I thought everybody that. Uh, thought they were real was uh you know crazy you know there's no way something like that could exist and and people not know it right uh, how old were you when you when you i guess the the first encounter where you realized hey that this really could you know be something um i was probably in my mid-30s when i had uh, my first experience that um just was absolutely uh, unable to explain, um, and it 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 takes a uh, you know like mine was kind of like Carrie's. I'm a hunter, and uh, when you see something that is basically impossible, um, it, it just it takes a while to to download, and even if if you ever do accept it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. It it, totally it is hard true. to accept. Even when you know it's right there in front of you, you still you have to question things. You, you you wouldn't be human if you didn't, because you've never experienced this before. Been in the woods your entire life, you know why hasn't this happened before? So I mean, all these questions do come about, and you begin to wonder what else is out there too. So, Absolutely. So just kind of walk us through what happened to you the first time. Well, the first time I was hunting, and uh, this is back before. I knew that I needed glasses. Um, basically, everything 20 to 30 yards past me, maybe maybe a little bit closer than that, is um, ghosted. Uh, but mm -hmm. I'd been away probably my whole life and just you know thought that was normal. And I was sitting in a stand, and um, I like to get you know I hunt for big bucks. You don't kill them normally out in open fields, and right. so I get in the thick of things. You know I, I right. I hunt and I don't get, uh, I, I play the wind. I do the thermals. I do my research. Uh, I get close to their bedding area, catch them when they do their 90 and do their turn. And I, I have, 
maybe three or four shooting lanes, you know, through thick brush. Uh, and if I, I don't get the shot, I don't get the shot. Um, and it was my favorite hunting area. Well, this, uh, I was taking, um, I'd taken two or three deer and this particular evening, something was staring at me. I, I can, I can tell very strongly when someone's staring at me, I'll turn and look you right in the eye. And to the point when someone's staring at me and I've looked at them two or three times, I got to keep telling myself, don't look, don't look. Right. I'm telling myself not to look. And something was staring at me the whole evening. And I kept turning around and trying to see it and trying to find it. And, and, and I just, I just couldn't find it. And, and probably the first time in the woods, um, that, uh, um, I just kind of felt unnerved, just, just something, something wasn't right. Um, you know, I'm not scared of people, you know, I used to fight a lot growing up, um, grew up a little rough and, uh, I just don't have that fear thing, you know, whoever's going in's going in. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, I kept looking and I kept looking, well, this, this went on for about three hours and it's kind of getting to the point thinking, is someone up there like, you know, spying on me what what is going on and and i was afraid it was going to interrupt my uh hunting <clears throat> man it's tough to revisit this <clears throat> and um <clears throat> so i'm sitting in my stand and right close to dark i heard probably about 200 200 yards away um coyotes lit up um you know we 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 you know what the sound is when coyotes light up and oh yeah that in itself can can be kind of scary i guess for some people but um any route when those coyotes lit in um i heard behind me from the exact area that i had been looking all night long um trying to find who was staring at me i heard thump, and i i grew up on a farm I've heard deer jump. Um, I've heard cows jump, but whatever landed was heavy. And it ran past me on all fours and it was black. Now this, your brain, um, I don't know if you've ever studied on how the brain cops have, you know, had been in a shootout and said they seen balloons with F's on them flying through the air. And what they found out they were seeing was the bullet casings with the, with the F for the feather on it. And your, your brain in seconds can process so much when, um, that hype or adrenaline kicks in, however yeah. you want to say it. And I, I knew right where to look. So as fast as I could turn and look, I see this thing on the ground. Now, I, it happened so fast, I can't give you really a size. All I can tell you, it was on all fours. It moved faster. I, I have seen, you know, um, you know, you've seen cheetahs on TV, uh, you know, watch National Geo. I've never seen something move this fast. And I'm trying to process what in the world is this. Well, right in front of my stand, um, there, there's its brush. You, you would have to see my land to understand what I'm saying. It was clear cut years ago. And there's this, there is this, um, some sort of tree type thing that hangs over. Um, and when you rip it out of the ground, it clears, clears out like a 30 to a 10 to 20 foot circle. And it's got these thorns on it. You know, nothing on all fours is going to go through that. Right. Sawbriars. Yep. Yeah, and when it hit that, this, this thing stood up on two legs. And I have never seen anything in my life as um, fluid. I mean, it went, it weaved in and out of the trees. Um, it, you could, I, I don't even know how to put it into words, how it did it. And all of this happened 
in seconds. I could probably only see for about 50 yards. I mean, this happened in seconds. And when it had time to get to where those coyotes were, I mean, all oh, heck broke loose. Um, and I sat in my stand, and I don't know how long I sat there, but um, I had to get down after dark because it was dark by then. And uh, I, I didn't go back, my goodness, for seven, seven years or so. And I, I finally decided, you know, I got family there. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to my grave. Something happening to one of my family and me, me not going out and not that I'm going to do something, but at least, I don't know, let them know that, I don't know, they're not going, I, I just don't know. Um, I, I still have experiences. I know we only got an hour. I'm trying to. No, hit. you're fine. Okay. Yeah. Any time. Um, can, always, can always come back too. Yeah, yeah. Um, the next thing that happened after that was about six, seven years later. And here's the funny thing. I've had people that'll come to my place and they'll want to hunt with me because uh, I, I will I will not go after deer by myself. I, I did two years ago and I'm, I'm just not doing it. Um, I'll get into that in a little bit, but I, I want someone to hunt with me, but I'm, I'm always up front and I tell them, you know, Hey, there's something here. You know, I, I don't, I don't know, you know, don't, I tell them, I don't know exactly what it is. You know, if, if Bigfoot is real, I know your experience carrying, we've decided, you know, talk about this. They're definitely living on my property. Um, I, I agree a hundred percent. But Paul, let me ask you this. Like before all this happened, before take our fronting, did the woods get quiet or anything like that? Did you notice that? Or you, was, you know, was it until the coyotes started, started like when they're denning up or coming out of their den? Uh, uh, as was, far as the how, woods, getting, woods getting quiet, I was um, so perturbed that someone was watching me or, you know, looking at me. Uh, mm -hmm. that I, I was, I wasn't paying attention to none of that. Now, since then, in my other experiences, absolutely. Everything goes dead silent. Um, and I don't know if it's the vibration, um, you know, there, I know that, um, well, let, let me get into my second experience. So my second experience, um, my buddy's son had shot a deer and it was his first deer with a bow young boy um, and uh, they'd put a lot of work into it you know that's a that's a pretty you know not everybody can kill deer with a bow and um, we're tracking this yearling deer and I'm, I'm a phenomenal tracker and I've got my nose to the ground um, when I track I don't want anybody in front of me. I don't want anybody messing up the leaves. I've, I've tracked deer across an open field with no blood on what I call a heavy hoof. Um, a wounded deer will have at least one hoof. It hits hard. And I've, I've tracked it hundred, hundred yards across an open field. And, and then we find a deer. So I don't, I don't want anybody in front of me. And I, and then I, I pay attention to everything and I know my woods. So, you know, when I stop, I know where I'm at and we're, um, we're tracking this deer. And I, I find the slide, like, and you, you could even see, because he, he hit it in the lungs, you could even see where it slid and hit the tree. But there, there's no deer. Like, it's just gone. There's, there's no blood uh, leaving. And, and my buddy's there, and his boy's there, and we're like, what in the world? And we stand up and we're in this real thick brush and we stand up and you look and like seven foot from where this deer is missing. There's like a, like a hole through the brush. Like, and if you would just take a, well, if you would, I guess step, but this, this brush is like five and six, five foot tall, you know, there's, mm -hmm. there's nothing that went through it, 
there's just the hope. And then I shine the light, and six, seven foot from that is another hope. And then there's a, another hope. So my buddy starts falling the holes, and we're taking the light and shining. And he goes for about four or five of those holes, and all of a sudden, I had that same feeling I had seven years before. This was the first time I, I'd been close to that area. And I said, ho, ho, ho guys, t turn your lights out. So I, he tur we turned our lights out, and I look, and we're, we're within feet of where that happened. And I said, we, got, we need to go, and we need to go now. And he said, I ain't leaving without this deer. And all of a sudden, the woods went dead silent. Ew. We heard, and I'm telling you, it was within feet of my buddy. Within feet. We heard a scream that went through your body. That nobody or no thing could duplicate. Um, it absolutely went through your body. And next thing I know, my buddy's right beside me. Well, as we're leaving, you know, we're in there with flashlights. We don't have pistols. We don't have nothing. And as we're leaving, these coyotes, I thought, surrounds us like in a U shape. And they're doing this raw. And when every time they did it, it vibrated you. And we're like being escorted out of the woods. I mean, they're surrounding us in a U. And and he's like, my my buddy hunts bear. He went, he killed he killed a hog with the knife that the dogs had bade. Oh wow. He he's he's like me, he's not scared of nothing. And he yelled, uh, you know, I grew up around Dobermans. He yelled, shut up, dog. And as soon as he did, they, they cut him off. Well, that, that tells you that that animal is not intimidated by you. Right. So we, they escort us to the edge of a field. And we, we come, start walking away from the field. And I heard them turn and start walking away in my brain there's still coyotes and i said now wait a minute there coyotes don't have the mental capacity to just say okay you've crossed this line we're done with you and walk away so i told him i said i'm gonna walk back and see if they come back and of everything that i've done in my life that i wish i wouldn't have do, done that's it. Because when I turned and started back, they came back at me. Mm. And that let me know, well, number one, it wasn't coyotes. But number two, there was an intelligence there that was saying, you, you can't come any farther. Well, was well, was, was there something about the, the way it sounded? that would indicate that it could have possibly been coyotes? Well, was this you just I, rationalizing that, that I realize now it was me rationalizing because okay. it was going raw. I mean, it, it, and it vibrated you every time. I mean, every time. And, and they were doing it in a U. Well, my buddy gets back and he said right before that screen, he looked down with his flashlight, and on the ground, there was a piece of meat there. Ooh. You know, like when you're skinning out a deer, and you're cutting it up, and meat falls? Yep. He found a piece of meat on the ground. I, he, he's not been back. Oh. So what do you think that was? Do you think that they just they found the deer, and... That was just part of it. I, I think, I think that he was following the holes, and I think he was right to to whatever had taken that deer. 
he he was right there. I mean, and I've tried to talk to him about it since, and he doesn't want to talk about it. Um, yeah, it's a common thing. I mean, how long? When was the first time I talked to you and tried uh, to get you to and tried to get you to come on here? It was last year sometime, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. And I'm glad you finally did, because, uh, like I said, I think it's important you telling this because there's no telling how many people are out there that have experienced the same thing, still experiencing it. That can that can get something from it. Uh, do you think Do you think they're dangerous? I mean, you have to think they are to a degree. Y but. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I believe, um, I, I believe they're an animal, or or, or something. Um, with a, they have an intelligence level. Uh, do I think they're dangerous? Yeah. What well, you know? I'm, I mean, I'm a hunter. Uh, I can track. And, uh, you know, um, I believe I'm supposed to take care of my family. You know, I got kids that go through there. They, they're, they're always going around on that property. So I decided that I was going to get a pistol. And I was going to hunt. That they, you know, they're not going to run me out. Um, I've had deer multiple times. I've had deer. They're just, they're just gone. They're, they, they, they're just gone. The, the blood trail ends there, there'll be blood everywhere and and they're just going um so what i've what i started doing about four years ago or five years ago um uh, when when i was tracking a deer after dark um i can tell the something staring at me so um i you know had bought a pistol and I would turn the I'll turn the light off. Right, I I just did this last year, and I I turn the light off, and all I got to do is just relax, and I will know where something is staring at me, and I just turn around and click the light on. Not every time, but most of the time, there will be a set of eyeballs. Ooh. And they're eight to ten feet off the ground. They're about six inches apart. They're reddish orange, <clears throat> and <clears throat> and they are uh, about six to eight inches apart. Mm. Here's the here's the thing though. When I pull that pistol and start swinging it around, they know what I have, and they close their eyes. And not, o not only that, I've done this enough that they've studied, they, they, they know how far to be away from me that my light reaches. I have used spotlights. I have used dim lights. They're always right outside. Y you can kind of see an outline, but it's like, Darker than dark is probably that's about the only way I know to describe it. We hear that so much. And me personally, I don't think it's that. I don't think that they're just outside your light. I think there's something with their hair that either dissipates light or absorbs it or something doesn't reflect. And if it doesn't reflect it, it's just it's like a void there. That's just my personal opinion. But it doesn't. These This is just another one of those indicators to me. I mean, they're always. How do they know what how powerful your light is? You know, that's just to me one of those things. I think you are shining them. You're getting their eyes. They're open, and you said you can kind of see an outline, but it's what like void, blacker than yeah. black, dark, yeah. super dark. Again, this is my opinion. Doesn't mean you know a thing. But you sent. I want to show this right quick because uh, did you had a gut pogo missing, right? Oh, uh, I have. That's where it's come to now. Now I'm not having so much as deer missing. <laughs> I know this will sound crazy, but it's the point now I talk to them. I say, listen, because my family, we love deer. And I'll say, listen, I, I'm going to take this deer. You can have the gut pile. And I, I'll come back the next morning. I, I, don't, I, I don't go back afterwards because I don't want nothing to do with them. 
I just want to live on my property, live my life and hunt. And when I come back the next day, that gut pile will be gone. And he, here's the kicker. There is absolutely zero stomach matter. And if anybody that hunts and has seen where an animal gets into a gut pile or if you are gutting a deer and you hit the stomach, when that stomach matter comes out, it is impossible to get it all. Yeah. And I will come back to just nothing. No stomach matter, nothing left. Yeah, no drag marks. You no. know, just, if, just if gone. Coyote, yeah, if coyotes get it, then it's a mess. A mess. Absolutely. They'll they'll pretty much, especially if there's a pack of them. They'll get what they can get and drag it off, uh, or they'll just devour it right there if it's yeah. you know far enough away from from people. Uh, and if they do that, it's just going to be a scene. It's going to be you know like a murder scene. It's going to be terrible. Yep. Uh, I want to show you sent me some pictures. I'm not. I don't want to show that deer just because kids watch. Yeah. And and it's uh it's pretty gory. Yeah, but yeah, I do want to show this. I just I want to I want to mention this right quick. You uh, this footprint you got now to me that is that's a left foot. Big toe looks like it's right there by your boot. We've seen this so many times, where that heel hooks outward, and I don't think it's just how their foot is shaped. I just think it's how they step sometimes. Maybe when they're creeping or walking a certain way. You get that curve like that. Uh, that looks like a left foot to me. I could be wrong, but I, it does look like the big toe is right there by your boot, to the toe of, toe of your boot. But, I mean, that's a huge track. You can see the toes. You can see the foot. We've seen this dozens of times, a track just like this, where it maybe they get their heel down and then turn their foot, and it just makes a – have you found other tracks that look like this? No, um, but I, I don't look. <laughs> I got you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did, this did, a, yeah. This other, I yes. To yeah. where I jumped off the back of my um, golf cart, um, and I jumped up. I, my, the back of my golf cart has like a, like a thing I made to haul stuff, and it's about four foot off the ground. I was standing on that, and my wife was there with me, and I jumped up. I'm about 200 pounds. I jumped up and so another three feet or so and landed beside that on just my heel to try to make that impression. And I barely went in the ground. It would be on the, it would be the second picture I sent you. That's a little bit out and you can see my heel to the left over about a foot or two from that one. How, how, how fresh do you think it was? Uh, Paul? Well, I would say, a couple of days and this is why they keep taking my stinking salt blocks <laughs> I, the only way i can keep a salt block out for the deer and my and now my cows is i have to put a infrared camera on it if if i don't put an infrared camera on it it's gone especially the green ones that has the more minerals mineral salt right yep uh, heard they, it so many times. Heard they, that very same thing. They'll leave the other ones, but take the red ones or the green ones. Yep. Yeah, they won't touch a white one. So you put, show deer, you, put the, you put the deer blocks out or just salt blocks? Well, I've been... And you know what I mean by the deer blocks? They're almost like sugary corn. No, I don't put those out. Um, okay. I put out, you know, just the square mineral block. Um, they don't bother like the, the the salt that's like a rock they don't bother right. that but if i put one of those square brown or the green the green doesn't last days just days yeah. it's gone and i had went back to check to see if it was there and i had just put it out a couple of days before and that was there but this is the other thing too that i wish i would have taken a picture of now granted they are there eating salt but there was deer hair everywhere. Now, maybe they were shedding. It wasn't really that time of year. 
but there was deer hair everywhere. Um, my wife um, has had experiences. Um, one morning she was sitting on the couch and it was right before day break. And she looked out the window and one was looking in the window at her. Standing Ooh. outside. Um, How'd she describe it? All she said was something massive and blacker than the night. And she said, it stood up and looked at me. So I what time of the day was that, Paul? That probably would have been about 530 in the morning. Oh, five. wow. So right. Yeah. Um, and so I went out to track it. And it came in on fours, not leaving much of an impression. Then it went to two, and you could physically see right outside that window where it turned and took another step and put two feet together and looked in on her. I see that. That would tick me off right there. Oh, yeah. That's crossing the line, I, I think. I'm sure they don't have a line. Uh, <laughs> who knows? But for you and your family, I mean, that's messing with your wife and your oh. family. I don't know. I, I think I might have to go outside and fire a few shots and just kind of think, tell them. Yeah, and with that, do you think they're sizing you up during this process I, of I, seeing how far they can push you? And see, I I don't think so, and this is why. I have I have rushed them when when they've closed their eyes. I've ran as hard as I could at them, and you know I've I've never caught them, and they make no sound when they leave. They make zero sound um and i i told carrie this i was over in africa and the africans have like an inch layer of fat or so on their foot i mean i watched them set and take their teeth and pull like inch long thorns out of their feet and i'm like doesn't that hurt and they said they couldn't feel it but i know mm -hmm. they did not wear shoes nowhere um if they had shoes on they would rip the soles out of insoles out of them but when they walked, they didn't make a noise. And sometimes they didn't leave much of a print. Um, wow. So I have, I have run at them. Um, I've got area, I've got a trail, a four wheeler trail <laughs> that if I clean it out within no, within a few, a short period of time, there's going to be another tree block of my trail. They bend trees over. You can see where they physically pulled them down from in amongst other trees and bent them across my path. And they lay like logs on them to hold so that they will, they will go that way. Um, but I, we, I've, I've, I've told, you know, I, they probably have no idea what I'm saying. I've, I've said, you know, I'm not afraid of you. If they wanted to kill me, I'd be dead. They may not know what you're saying, but I think they understand your tendencies. They think they've watched you enough. It's just like your wife. You know, when your wife's mad at you, she ain't got to say a word. <laughs> oh, you know? yeah. It's the same thing. So I think they, I think they kind of get the the thing. Hint, right or get the gist uh, of what's going on there. Um, talk talking about so i want to show this other pictures there's something i want to i want to comment about it i did i couldn't find the one uh you said you sent with uh your heel in it but this right here you said you got this off facebook and it was like what 20 20 miles from your house yep north of my property someone sent that to me on facebook I'm 99% sure that that is a cutout that you can get at the flea market. And, and it, it may be. Absolutely. It looks just like those cutouts, those sideways profile cutouts. It may not be. I'm just saying that's really what it looks like. Um, not to mention, you know, broad daylight. This is really not the uh, normal behavior. Of these Absolutely. Creatures. Absolutely. So I, it was when I looked at it, I was like, wow. And then I got to looking at the way it's cut, you know, the way it looks. And I was like, I think that's a cutout from the, so 
but you just somebody sent you that though right That's yeah yeah and, miles you know, from if people you know they tease you and make fun of you you, you know how it is yes I'm here, right. here's the thing with 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 me people know that i do not lie and that's where they struggle processing because they know that I'm not lying. Um, you know, we, we've heard tree knocks, you know, prior to my experience in that same area, prior to seeing that, I was walking through the woods one time and it sounded like a cow tore down through the woods. I mean, sticks breaking. Like a mad bull. Oh, and, and I'm like, what in the world? And I looked, and if you would take a 36-inch wide door and take it up like six or seven feet and plow through the woods, I mean, you could see a line right down through the woods. Um, and... I have seen, my wife has seen stuff running off. I have seen stuff that it, it's just so fast that you, you question if you even seen anything. Right. It, it, Cartoon then, fast. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's a good way to describe it. I hear that so much. And, you know, talking about ridicule, I don't get mad at these people because some, a lot of times it's a defense mechanism, Paul. You know, it's one of those things you're not going to convince someone that doesn't want to believe or someone that spends a lot of time in the woods. They don't want to know that there's something out there like that. I wouldn't. So I don't get mad at those people, um, you know, doing making fun or joking around. They're just comforting themselves. I don't think it's to hurt you in any way. I really think it's more it's like their own defense mechanism. Sure. Absolutely. I just think it's to comfort themselves, to make them feel better that that they know what's going on out there. You know, ignorance is bliss, that type of thing. <laughs> and uh, you're not going to try to tell me there's a monster out there watching me while I'm hunting, because if he, if they believe it, then their hunting is <laughs> not going to be the same. Look how, look, how do you hunt now? How much different is the way you hunt now than you did? Cause it took you seven years to go back, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and how much different is it now? It, it's to the point now where I'm kind of back to where I was because I, I'm, I've just, I'm just, I'm telling you, if they wanted me dead, I would be dead. There, sure. there, there, there is, there is, there is no gun. You, you could not swing a gun fast enough to hit this. Um, so my hunting now, I'm back to walking through the woods without a light because I go in without a light. Mm -hmm. um, but what I will not do, um, and, and this is the main reason why that I decided to do the call is I talked to Carrie about hex suits. Yes. My wife bought that for me as a birthday gift, and I, I thought it was the dumbest thing the, ever. The what, the what suits? Hex. H-E-C apostrophe S. Yeah. Okay. What these suits do is they're supposed to block your electromagnetic frequency or something that muscle. Okay. Okay. I got you. Now, anybody that's been hunting has had a deer blow at them two or 300 yards away. And there is absolutely no way the deer seen you. I'm, yeah. That you haven't been busted. It's almost like the stranger danger. Is yeah. What I call them. Yeah. yeah. The blow. Yep. Um, yep. So my wife, I don't know how she found out about it. So she buys me this, tells me what it does. And I'm like, why well, start wearing it to appease her? And I would be squirrel hunting and I would hear a squirrel. And I'm like looking around trying, and I'm telling you, it's close. All of a sudden I've had a squirrel jump on my shoulder like I'm a log and jump over to another tree. That would scare the devil. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, Couldn't imagine. <laughs> I had one, a deer was coming in, and it land, it jumped on my, I was sitting in the stand, and it jumped on my knee. And I'm like, and it, it's looking at me, because, you know, the mask don't cover your eyes, and it's seeing my eyes, and it's looking at me like, what in the world? And this deer's coming in, I'm like, man, I need to get a hold, get out. And I went, boo, and it went, Quack, and I'm just like a cat. <laughs> dug in my, that was a mistake. But um, this hex suit, um I have deer. I, I was hunting 
and I kept hearing deer coming and I didn't think they would be coming to the back of me because it was nothing but briars and I could hear the deer chewing and I'm like what is going on and I'm trying to find this deer I turn around and this deer is like six foot from me standing right there eating briars and the wind you know is in my favor Mm. of course or that they would have busted me and and i just sat there in awe as this deer walks by i mean the things work if if you're not moving if you're not moving that you know just to where they can see movement but as soon as they look away and try to come back they can't find you now have you tried wearing that and getting up in a in a tree stand (sighs) yeah that's that's what happened I, I don't go looking for these animals. I don't want to see them. <laughs> but I just meant for for deer because I always hated getting yes. getting getting busted when I was on the ground. Yes. When you knew uh, one was behind you, and then you're they can see you know, your outline. Like Chuck, yeah. You know, if you don't cover your outline, yeah, of course they can see your outline. But but I'm to the point now. I don't go hardly very far up in a tree, and I use the wind in my favor, and no, they don't see me. So I had not hunted my place for a couple years. I'd hunted elsewhere and I, I really struggled that year. So I came back to my place and the deer hadn't been hunted and I was able to kill. And, you know, in a matter of three or four days, I killed three or four deer. Well, the last deer, um, I, I knew I can hear, you can hear them coming. You I know that they don't make a noise when they don't want to. But when they're just walking, you can hear bipedal steps. You hear sticks breaking. You hear them. And the night before, I mean, they were coming. And I could hear, you know, I... I, I know I sound like I'm saying, oh, that's what was there. It could have been a human, I guess, in the middle of the woods sneaking up on me. I I don't know. But something bipedal, and there's four of them coming Mm. up. And I'm going, in my brain, I'm going, I haven't hunted this. And I've been listening to this about, you know, the deer. And I'm thinking, are they frustrated because I'm taking so many deer? And I probably got to do deer faster than I ever had in my life. So I rush off. Why I got out of her so quick that I I left my gun. And I had no intentions of going back. So I I come back and out of the the gut pile's gone and then there's my gun. So I get up in my stand to get my stuff. And it was close to dark. And I've got that hex suit on because I wear it every time I'm in the woods now. But, let me tell you how I know the hex suit works. I have a stand in the air that's got windows, acoustically designed. Um, I don't know if I got time. I, I may go back to this story. But I have had deer bust me in the stand, and I literally tinted my windows with, with tint. And then put shoot-through netting on the outside. There... There's physically no way for the deer to see me. And there was this lead doe that would bust me all the time in that stand. <laughs> That's so irritating. Yeah. I mean, oh. windows, you almost just want to shoot the doe to make it stop. I couldn't. And I hate to say that, but. I couldn't shoot her. She was, she would stay 100, 150 yards away and stand on a bank and never take her eyes off that stand. And I thought, how is she seeing me in here? Mm -hmm. This is impossible. I mean, she got x-ray vision, you know? And so I go, I get my gun. I'm getting up in my stand. Now, I just walked through that area. And I'm getting up in my stand. And I I get my stuff out. And I look out. And here's this doe coming. (laughs) That That for four or five years I've been trying to kill. And it's right at dark. And I'm like, how? And I'm standing there with my hex suit on and like an an orange shirt. 
and she's not seeing me. That's how I know that these suits work. We're going to get some of those for the next 168. Man, That's a great idea. Need to be careful. So any route, I shoot her. Well, she <laughs> runs off. And I'm telling you, she was above where I live at in Ohio. Our deer's, it's easy to have a deer above 200 pounds. Mm -hmm. and my deer get corn year round, you know? And, and, um, so by, by now it's dark. Um, I don't have a pistol. I did not plan on hunting. I was just, I had one bullet for my gun and it's a single shot. So I, for the first time ever, I'm in my woods past 930 with the hex suit on and I don't even think about it. I am standing there gutting that deer literally <clears throat> about 10 to 15 feet from me. I hear a stick break. Oh my goodness. And I just put my head down and I said, I will leave you this gut pile, but I've been after this deer. You cannot have it. And I, I did not look because I did not want, I don't want to see them. Right. And I drug that deer out so hard and so fast that I, I physically made myself sick. Um, I've not been back down in there since and hunted. Um, I, I've got to, I, I struggle finding people, people ridicule me and, you know, they'll make poke fun, but no one will go in there with me. Um, See what I mean? One, one, one hunter <laughs> that was with me had shot a monster buck and he got shot it with a bow. Well, we're down in there with a the rifle tracking and by now it's 1130 a.m. And as we're tracking, about, I don't know, 200, 250 yards in, we're in thick stuff. And I said to him, I said, listen, it's, it's, it's close. He said, how you know? I said, it's staring at me. Because normally if there's two of us, you never see nothing. If... If there's someone else in there with me, nothing. No walking up on, no sounds, no woods going quiet, which, by the way, on the woods going quiet, this is just a thought. You know elephants as massive as they are. They communicate in such a sub-low frequency mm. that they communicate for miles. Yeah. How do we know that these things aren't doing that and that's why the woods go quiet. We don't. But, you know, a lot of times what will happen, if you're listening to crickets or birds or whatever, crickets are, are listening to each other. You know, they're not talking to us. So if you have a cricket chirping here and he goes quiet because something stuck close to him, this one's going to go quiet. Then the next one, the next one's like a chain reaction, you know, that when the predators come around. That's yeah. why I think that happens. Yeah. Um, because it does happen. You can get to an area where it's just, even at night, nothing is going on. And that's what's so creepy. When it's so quiet, you can hear the ringing in your ears like tinnitus. Yep. You know, yeah. When it's that quiet, that just, there's something creepy about it. You just get that creepy feeling. But you may be right. You know, elephants don't just do infrasound, though. They make other sounds that are audible to us. It's like a purr. I, I looked this up. Um, they have two sets of vocal cords. And the low frequency is between the other frequencies. It's like they call it purring, essentially. You know, tigers do it. Um, but there's another audible, audible sound in there with it. I don't think any of them just do infrasound. I'm not sure about that. I tried to look into that and find, but I wasn't able to find anything. Now, for Sasquatch to do that, maybe they do. It's... Uh, it would explain a lot of things. I think EMF explains a lot more to me. 
of the things that are going on, especially when it comes to the paranormal parts and the woo side of uh, people experiencing Sasquatch and being around them and feeling sick, feeling like they're being watched, losing time, hearing voices. Yep. Uh, you know, that's all EMF will do that to you, high levels of it. So, and we, we talked about this the other night, you know, these creatures don't wear shoes. They are, the earth has a electromagnetic field. So it keeps us, so it keeps the sun from blowing our atmosphere away. <clears throat> yep. And they're in touch with the ground. You know, we wear shoes. So maybe they're in touch with the earth and are able to control this somehow, or at least drawn to the places that where there are high levels of it. And that's, this may be why these things are going on. So to me, there's a lot of explanations in there. I'm not saying I'm right at all. Just looking at the mountain of anecdotal evidence and hearing these things and us taking EMF meters into the woods and getting 200, 300 milligal spikes when you can't get two at your plug-in in in your house. I mean, you're out in the middle of nowhere getting this. So there's something going on there, I believe. But you could be right. It could be infrasound. Well, when we were tracking for that deer, I, I kept walking. And I, I told him, I said, if you see it, you need to shoot it in between the eyes. I mean, or, you know, it was a monster buck. You know, I'm not normally like that, but it was gut shot. It was going to die. Mm. And he screamed at me. And I look, and the spotlight is just shaking all over the place. And I look up, and right there is standing one looking around a tree. Once again, it's just blacker than night. The eyes glowing. They're, the eyes are always the same color. They're always that burnt orangish red. And he's just, I mean, he's having a meltdown. Because, I, you know, here I told him something was there and he's massively making fun of me. Now, all of a sudden, he's looking at it. And, and you're talking 20 yards, 20, 30 yards away. And... So I bring the rifle up because, you know, I'm thinking, you know, is this thing going to charge? What's it going to do? Right. And as I'm bringing the rifle up, it closes its eyes and then steps behind the tree. And then that's it. No. But he, he by this time, he puts a light down him. He's having a meltdown. He's having an absolute meltdown. And he's screaming my name, um, screaming, what was that? And I asked him, I said, what happened? He said it was laying flat on the ground. He said it was, it was flat on the ground and I thought it was the deer. So I went oh, and to it pull, stood up. Oh. pull the gun up and he watched it stand up. Oh, now if you talk to him now, he will tell you that he's seen an owl. A what? An owl. <laughs> An owl? Yeah, because all the ridicule, all the people making fun of him. Um, he just so he it's just not some cognitive. Know. It's not some cognitive dissonance. He's just denying. Yeah. Okay. And hey, here, look. speaking of owls, you know, Carrie, we've talked about this. I, I've got an outside wood furnace. I'll walk out, and I will hear. Like seven to ten owls, and they all sound the same, and they will be all over the place. I, I, I now don't think they're owls. Not that, not seven or ten. Uh, I, I think they're, I think they're communicating. Uh, you know, um, barred owls are pretty territorial. Yeah, it's hard to find two in the same area. But, um, you guys asked how I handle now on my hunting. I don't hunt my property very much. I go elsewhere, um, and I will only hunt my property if I have struggled getting enough deer, because we eat deer meat all the time. Uh, it's actually yeah. better for you. Uh, and um, uh, if I'm struggling getting deer, and then if I do, I always, except for last year, but I won't make this mistake again, I always have somebody um, ready to come help me track a deer if need be. Um, and that's why I don't want my identity known is because, you know, it is my, it is my property. And 
Right. I'm afraid someone come in and, uh, you know, start messing with them or whatever. It's hard to tell what would happen. You know, I have cows. Uh, Look, I don't blame you. And I don't think anybody else here does either. You know, it, it takes a lot of courage. We say this all the time. There's no courage in not caring what people think. Um, when you do care what people think and you still come out with your story, but I think you taking the steps you do, this is how you can get your story out there. Then this is how you can do it. It's a uh, uh, hats off to you. Commend you. And I really appreciate you doing it. Um, we've got about five minutes. According to the time we may cut a little bit short just because I have to be on shift at in five minutes. <laughs> but if there's uh, anything else, I was going to take some, uh, a question, but I didn't really see any. Um, Usually people will put their questions in caps up here, but uh, is there anything else you want to touch on real quick for the next five minutes? Did, did you see on that one picture of the deer? See, that's a video and I couldn't send you the video. Did you see the little knife marks? Uh, I didn't look at them that close. Okay. If you it's look pretty at gory stuff, I just want to let people know yeah. it's this, whatever you found there was, it's pretty messed up. And where it took the hide off so perfectly and only took the brown left all white i mean just perfectly cut it off and removed the guts from the side which no hunter does um no. I, I just you know how many other people are out there like me and you carry that's hunting and just I, I can think back as a kid how many times squirrels threw nuts at me thousands <laughs> Yeah, they weren't. <laughs> yeah, and I think of it now, I'm like, why in the world did I label that as a squirrel throwing nuts at me? Because the cartoons? I mean. No, I yeah. thought when I was a kid hunting, squirrel hunting, I thought that I was getting stuff thrown at me. And it turned out to be, you know, the black man I saw in the woods when I was, yeah. you know, nine, ten years old. And, and I didn't put that together that. until, Yeah. Why they and I didn't that. put it together you, until now. So that's you would think something that wants to remain hidden and not found out, not discovered, would kind of not want to give themselves away. And to me, and unless it's just and Mark Zasky says this, says the little ones mess with you. They just the big ones stay away, the little ones, you know, little, they're probably still bigger than us, younger <laughs> ones, uh, just want to mess with you. Just because they can, I suppose. Maybe it's like a game, who knows? But it's uh, if you're aware, um, it can be pretty unnerving. I, I do believe that. I've talked to enough people that have told me that that they've got sticks and rocks thrown at them, and it's just time to go. Oh yeah, Scott Pace is one of them. Well, we, when we were building that stand, and we were building it at night using 500 watt halogen shop lights, a stick come flying through the trees, and it landed about 20 yards from us. The next thing that come through the trees was probably a 30, 40 pound sandstone and landed 10 feet from us. Ooh. We decided to close up shop and quit working after dark. They, they, they didn't like you uh, keeping them up, I gather. Nope. Well, That's there's a uh, hey, cutting this short. We're just cutting about a minute short. That's fine. So we're getting into anything else. I just want everybody to know that we will be back Wednesday. Uh, hoping to get Hiker Dave on here for Researchers Report Wednesday. I, I talked to him before. He said he would do it, but I wanted to just confirm before I announce it for sure. But we will have someone Wednesday. Uh, Saturday on Hidden Existence at 6 o'clock p.m. Central, the lovely Miss Linda Arnold, my, lo my lovely wife, will be doing an interview right by herself with Miss Daniela on Hidden that Existence. That will be good. Yep, that's tomorrow at 6 o'clock p.m. Central. Uh, don't think we're going to be doing a late show this Sunday. Um, but we but will, we, we will, we will still do Fridays, whether I'm here or not, Brad will probably be here. Yeah. And, and Paul, we definitely want to have you back on. Cause I, lots of things I'd like to ask you next time. So yeah. Plus questions from the chat. If you wouldn't mind yeah. coming back, back for us. Yeah. Just let me know. Well, we certainly do appreciate you and we thank yes, everybody we for joining us here tonight. Uh, don't forget to, out, to go and check out the links in the description. You might find something there that you like. All right. Take care, everybody. All right. Bye. Oh, Night, wait, everybody. One more thing. Oh, one more thing. Sunday, five o'clock. I will be on Rooted Expeditions. Our buddy Zach from Rooted Expeditions invited me on five o'clock this Sunday. 
So I'll be over there if you guys want to go and check it out. I'll put a uh, I'll put a note and a link in the community tab. So, all right. Thanks, everybody.